1861, when it was clear that there was going to be a civil war, not everybody was going to serve on the front line. In Maine's case, what they recognized was there was a particular danger that they could have incursions by the Confederate Navy on the coast. So among the things that Maine did was they set up these units of coast guards, companies of men who volunteered to serve when they were needed. Castine would have a coast guard company. Bangor had one. Bangor had coast guard company A. The mayor of Bangor, Isaiah Stetson, was one of the first to sign, he enlisted. He didn't expect ever to be called up. Down the list was the Vice President of the United States, Hannibal Hamlin, who was a lawyer in Bangor at the time. He didn't expect to serve either, but what he wanted to do, he wanted to sign up so he would show that the commitment was there by the local leadership, by federal leadership. And they got a full roster of men in Company A of the Maine Coast Guards. Roll the clock forward a little bit, and after the Battle of Gettysburg, get into 1864, and a lot of the first enlistments were running out, and they needed fresh troops at the front, and what they wanted to do was call forth some men who had some skills. And at the time, Fort McClary in Kittery was being protected by the 1st New Hampshire Heavy Artillery Battery, and it was only you know a couple dozen men, but they had cannon and they had skills. So why don't we bring these guys forward to help protect the city of Washington in the event that we have a Confederate attack. So they called the first New Hampshire boys forward and said, well, we can't leave Fort McClary empty. And they just said, well, since it's really in the state of Maine, why don't we get one of these Coast Guard units to come down? So they called up Maine Coast Guard Company A from Bangor and assigned them to Fort McClary. They assured Hannibal Hamlin, well, <laughs> Mr. Vice President, you, you don't need to serve. And Hannibal says, oh, yes, I do because Hannibal Hamlin was sitting in Washington, D.C., presiding over the United States Senate, what was left of it because of the Civil War, and it was hot, it was muggy, it was uncomfortable, there wasn't much to do. And then the Republicans had had their national political convention in Baltimore, and effrontery of effronteries, they had decided that Hannibal Hamlin no longer fit what they wanted to have in the vice presidency of Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln was going to run again, but we're going to ask this Andrew Johnson guy from a border state. We're going to put him on the ticket as the vice presidential candidate. Hamlin was, was essentially a lame duck. He was out of a job. The convention had voted him out as vice president, and he thought, oh, all right, I do not need to stay here. So sure enough, he comes to the coast of Maine in the summer of 1864, and he serves his 90 days in Fort McClary, doing exactly what the other Company A Coast Guardsmen did. He stood watch, he peeled potatoes, he did close order drill, and he spent the summer on the coast of Maine. Thanks for watching. And don't miss a single episode as we delve into the fascinating history of Maine's role in the Civil War. Please like and subscribe now.